Our next uh, speaker on the subject of connecting people, coast, valley and plains, is Rob Oakeshott, MP, Federal Member for Line. We've got plenty of time, Rob. Does everyone want to get up and stretch their legs for one minute, just so you haven't been sitting down and get the blood flowing? <laughs> Certainly flowing in Canberra. <laughs> Alrighty. Is Uncle Bill still here or is he is he gone? No. Well, in his absence, thanks to Uncle Bill and to uh, Birupai Elders, past and present. Uh, anyone from Waramai or Dungari who's in the area, uh, welcome as well. And anyone who's travelled uh, who is an elder from other parts of Australia, uh, welcome to Birupai country. Uh, and I will finish where I started on some of that because uh, these are not only exciting times for regional Australia, uh, I think these are also exciting times to get some issues, uh, some long overdue issues dealt with in regards to in Indigenous Australia as well. Uh, to Elizabeth McGregor, the chair of the RDA, to the whole RDA uh, board from the Mid North Coast, and I know there are plenty of other uh, RDAs in the room, uh, welcome, and hopefully you get something from the day and the visit to the Mid North Coast. As well to the sponsors behind, um, these are the sort of days that can't be put on without them. I ran into uh, Andrew in Canberra yesterday and some Finnish friends. Um, so uh, thank you all for being involved and particularly uh, for us as a Mid-North Coast where uh, we probably haven't had the university engagement that we would have liked and we think we deserve. Uh, to see some universities uh, from outside this area starting to invest and show some, uh, some interest and starting to connect as the theme. Um, thank you for being involved with today as well. To GMs, uh, the local GM Andrew Roach and uh, others that are in the room and there are many uh, mayors as well and I've met some outside before, uh, councillors uh, and everyone within the local government network, welcome as well. And, you know, I don't know who's running uh, the Mid-North Coast today because looking around the room I can see plenty of people uh, who uh, probably should be doing something else but who are here. <laughs> so thank you also for coming along and connecting and starting to put the people element into uh, what's been going on in trying to um, re-energise uh, regional Australia. As well, of course, the Minister. Thank you, Simon Crean, for uh, coming today with your crew. Uh, and uh, they were important words you just said. And uh, I hope we can have a close and frank and successful relationship over the life of this parliament and hopefully uh, that is for three years um, and that we can all get full value uh, of this moment. But thank you also for taking time uh, in what is, I know, a very busy schedule for all of us. Uh, look, I can never speak for 17 minutes again. <laughs> so I'll try and be uh, below that, um, even though I would love to talk about this topic all day. Um, I would also love to stay here all day and listen. I think there's things for all of us to learn. Uh, I hope you don't take it as an offence that the Minister and I are going to scoot off around town and do a whole range of things from about 11 o'clock onwards, uh, but we'll hang here till then and uh, hopefully uh, 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 learn something ourselves as, as well as uh, stand and give a speech. We are going to go straight into a meeting uh, with the local RDA and hopefully uh, put some meat on the bones of a very good strategic plan that has uh, been f uh, brought forward at a, um, a fantastically timed moment. <laughs> I think they were all due in about two weeks after the election um, and lo and behold <laughs> um, events have really energised those strategic plans uh, around the country. So. Um, we will go into a meeting then. We're also then going to go into a really interesting meeting in regards to the carbon farming initiative that the Minister for Climate Change uh, announced uh, this week, uh, where we are trying to uh, work out this issue around carbon, and I know there'll be a mix of views in the room. 
uh, but for me, and I know for many people, uh, there is a uh, great opportunity for Australia to whatever scheme we end up with that deals with this question of climate, for land managers uh, in regional Australia to uh, significantly contribute, uh, whether that is in forestry, whether that's in on-farm practices, uh, whether that is in biodiversity expansion, uh, there is a wonderful opportunity to have a uniquely Australian uh, uh, answer to the carbon question. And uh, during the week, a carbon, carbon farming initiative was announced. So we're going to start to uh, try and localise some of those national announcements and uh, uh, get full bang for our buck here in contributing to that as well. So timing is everything, uh, I think, is a message that's already starting to emerge today and I think in the Minister's first slide uh, there was the first line on the first slide that made the point uh, how do we entrench the moment. I think everyone's uh, in the room would hopefully have seen what's gone on over the last 40 or 50 days. There is an exciting moment happening in politics. There is that uh, opportunity to re-energise uh, regional Australia. The big challenge and probably the regional leadership question is how to entrench it. And there was the one word that was on the Minister's first slide that I hope there's plenty of thought put on, not only today, but locally uh, for uh, as we think through strategic think thinking and regional leadership. How do we entrench this moment so that it doesn't rely on um, you know, 72 or 73 votes in a parliament uh, to uh, make it happen again? This moment will be lost. And, uh, you know, people such as myself <laughs> won't be able to cut a deal with a Prime Minister and or a Leader of the Opposition uh, every single election, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so we've got to entrench it. We've got to not only uh, uh, run off the back of what was a $9.9 .9 billion uh, handshake deal for regional Australia, but the more important work, you know, that'll play itself out over the next two or three years and the Health and Hospital Fund's the first initiative that's now, you know, open for submissions and locally Port Macquarie Base Hospital will be front and centre of that process. But arguably more importantly is the long term and really betting down uh, uh, opportunities for regional Australia so that we don't have to go through this process again. Um, I am thrilled that We've now, um, as we saw with the Minister's slide, uh, seeing a separate regional development department formed in Canberra. And as you hopefully also saw, um, there is genuine skin in the game now from the government in regards to uh, cabinet subcommittees and a whole structure uh, that hangs off the back of that. So hopefully that is, at the Canberra end, an important part of um, really entrenching uh, this important moment. And I'm you know, pleased that the Minister also mentioned John Ross in the room and, and Paul sitting next to him. Um, people do matter. You know, so we can entrench uh, a, uh, a structure, which you know, we're all do using our best endeavours to do, uh, but people matter. And referring back to what 15 years ago on the Jobs North program was a really good reference uh, point for this region. In my mind, and I'd be interested in other views in this room, but that's really the last real crack at doing something of substance in regards to um, real money to deal with some long-term unemployment issues on the mid-north coast and a version of real money going into regional development. Uh, John Ross, and I know there are others who uh, were involved and they may be in the room, uh, pulled that together with the minister at the time who was uh, Simon.